Perfect. So we are recording. So thanks everyone uh, for joining our Monday session. I see many new faces uh, here. So uh, our Monday sessions are governance education sessions. Uh, we have created the group basically to learn from each other because we are running a lot of experiments in Web3 at the moment. Nothing is perfect, but we need to try and improve. Uh, and we will improve much faster if we uh, do it together and learn from each other mistakes or successes. And uh, this week, uh, we are, uh, I would like to welcome uh, David Phelps from uh, JokeDAO. And we will have conversation uh, with him about JokeDAO and some of the governance concepts uh, he is exploring. Uh, so David, please take it away. Yeah, thanks. Thanks so much. So um, I really want to keep this as impromptu and conversational as possible. Uh, I think sitting in front of your computer for 30 minutes, <laughs> just listening to someone drone on uh, can be a bit boring. And it's possible that, you know, or even likely I'll say things that are you disagree with or already know. And so as much as possible, I just I just want to keep this open. So so what I'll, I'll start off by saying is just a quick intro, um, which is that joke out really encompasses two two entities. Um, and so one is the joke race. And the joke race is a proof of concept. Um, and what the joke race is, is every week people submit jokes and then they vote on their favorite jokes. And the goal is that each week it changes in terms of who wins. It's never first place. <laughs> so sometimes it's second place, sometimes it's third place, sometimes it's sixth place in terms of what wins. Now, if you vote on the winning entry, you get more joke tokens. Each joke token will let you vote in all future races. Uh, you can also sell these on Uniswap. Uh, if, if you get an NFT that is um, that wins, it's minted, uh, and then sold as, as the first user-generated NFT collection um, that gives you rights to the Joke Race Council uh, and the Joke Race Treasury. And what that means is you get to determine the rules for the Joke Race and join the Joke Race community as well. So last week, for example, uh, <laughs> um, uh, we sold uh, we we sold one for um, to Peter Pan. Uh, the person who submitted the joke got five hundred dollars or 0.26 ETH. Uh, we also put the same amount towards charity as well. Um, the fun of this game is that uh, it's really hard to be able to vote on the winning entry um, because if you put too many votes in, it's going to go above where you need it to. So you can, you know, what you really don't want is first place. And so this kind of controls a little bit against whales because if they put all their votes towards one entry, it'll go to first place. And the other thing is, that's nice is that you know, if we just rewarded people for first place, they would see which one we're winning. <laughs> we're winning. Um, first place and they would put all their votes towards it as well. Um, and so it actually means that there's an element of suspicion and suspense. The last few minutes are usually pretty pretty insane. Um, and it also means that people really have to collaborate with each other to try to win. So as Sergio is saying in the chat, Joke Cartel tends to win these. That's because they form, it's a group of, of uh, excited joke race players who formed a group together so they can collaborate and they come up with winning strategies each week um to win and so i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna come back to to why this matters for governance um in a moment but i want to put that out there first of all to say this week um we're going to be doing a bankless themed joke race in other words anyone who holds holds bank tokens will be able to collect voting tokens um just for this week uh we'll also make it a bankless theme uh as well and so just put this on your calendars thursday we'll open up submissions um and you can claim your tokens friday we'll have the actual contest at noon uh, 12 to 1230 uh, Eastern time. Okay, now let me step back to the bigger project. So the bigger project is Joke JokeDAO. Um, and Joke JokeDAO is for anyone to be able to build what we call contests. And so Joke Race is a good proof of concept for it. One reason I want to invite everyone here and in Bankless to play this week was to see what it's actually like to participate in this and how it operates. And also to give any feedback you have as well on our platform. Um, joke DAO, uh, the, the project is, is really to try to flip governance on its head as it's done in DAOs today. Um, and so, as we know, the way that most DAOs do governance is they have a core team um, that submits proposals to the community. And they go to the community and they say, do you approve this, yes or no? Uh, I think a perfect example of this would be Lido DAO, right? They're looking at trying to diversify their treasury, see if they want to bring in Dragonfly. They put a proposal to the community and it basically got shot down, but it got shot down for lots of different reasons, right? Some people didn't like the exact numbers on it. Other ones didn't like the exact participants. Some people didn't like the timeline. Some people didn't like the process, right? Um, and so all of those different people who voted no joined together as a block, shot it down. Um, and this is, as we know, the way that governance is being done today, core teams go to communities. And what we argue at JokeDAO is that this is a terrible way to do DAO governance. 
Uh, and this is absolutely fucking insane that any DAO should be run this way. The whole purpose of a DAO is to give the community voice. And if you are letting your core team go to the community to say yes or no on options, you are not giving your community voice. So for example, if we go back to Lido and we think about how that would be done if they'd used us instead, you would have had someone who could, maybe someone from the core team could have put together a proposal to say, let's diversify the treasury. But then someone else could have taken uh, that proposal, edited it, and submitted a separate version of that proposal and said, look, I, I like the overall idea, but the numbers are wrong. We need to change the actual numbers on these. And someone else might have said, you know what, the numbers are okay, but I disagree with the team. And they could have flipped it. And you could have had all of these different versions of the proposal go through so that you actually would have built a voting block around the one that was the ideal way of doing it as well. So this is what happens, right, when you can let your community actually participate in governance by actually being able to give feedback and being able to submit options as well. So that's the submissions piece. But there's something else that's really exciting that happens um, with us, and that's the voting piece. Because when you're voting, you're no longer voting yes or no. You're voting in terms of where you put your tokens, in terms of what you think you know your favorite options are. And so what that means is that at the end of the contest, you can see ranked options, right? One, two, three, four. And you can see how many votes those got. And you can get a sense of the passion from the community for each of these options. So to go to another example, if you think about grants, right now, uh, for example, any program that wants to give out grants, they'll usually put up a snapshot proposal and say, do we give this group a grant, yes or no? And then the community votes, yes, we're gonna give them a grant. Or you know, do we, do we engage in this funding allocation, yes or no? Everyone votes yes or no on the option. But instead, if they had choices for where you could put that, they could say, here's a bunch of grants, which ones do we wanna support? Everything starts to change. The social pressure changes, right? Because now you can vote towards the one you actually care about. You're not concerned about looking bad by voting no. But also you can see that the, the actual top options will surface to the top. Instead of having everything be a yes, no vote, you can suddenly actually get a much, much better vision of what the top options are that people are supporting. So for example, we had Austin Griffith use us um, for a hackathon in which people submitted ideas for what they wanted to see built in Web3. And this was cool because it separates the builders from the idea generators, right? So now builders have a full list they can go to of ideas and they can see what was supported and what people are excited by. Um, but what was also cool is that they gave out money for this and they were able to distribute the money proportionately to how much people voted for each option. So the number they can say, look, we're gonna give 10K to the top five options, but we can distribute that according to, to how people have submitted. So that's that's the quick the quick breakdown for joke DAO. Um, and again, Joke Race is really, you know, a proof of concept um, for this, but we're now being, you know, we, we've had a lot of really cool use cases since we launched a few weeks ago um, that I can dive into more. Um, and I can talk about some of the other benefits as well, but I want to start there uh, to, to prompt a conversation and, and very glad to answer any questions or keep rambling <laughs> as, as is helpful. So anyone from the audience has any question to David? I can also keep rambling. <laughs> um, so is this a lot like choice voting? Yes. Yeah, it's, it's similar to ranked choice voting um, in the sense that, it, again, two pieces. So there's a submission piece, a period where people can submit. And you can token gate, you can decide who gets to submit, what that community is, and they submit options. So your community can submit different options to say, you know, here's the top projects that I want to support. Here's a grant proposal, right? Um, you know, here's the different options for treasury diversification. And there's a voting period. And during the voting period, people put their votes towards different options. And yes, you get to see it ranked at the very at the very end. Perfect. Sergio, I see you, you have raised your hand. Yeah, more than a question is like a focus of conversation. Can you talk a bit more about how governance works in joke DAO? Because I know you have this like camera system yeah. of joke holders and NFT holders. So that's, uh, I think, a good example of how to do bicameral camera systems without overthinking about it. Cool. Yeah. So so again, if you remember that, that um, joke Joke DAO as a whole is really two entities. It's Joke DAO, the platform we're building for decentralized governance, uh, decentralized on-chain governance. And then it's the Joke Race, which is the proof of concept. So the Joke Race is um, run by NFT collectors. So actually, one hour ago, we put the joke out for this week. There's only one per week. It's the first user-generated NFT collection. And owning that gives you rights to the treasury. So this is basically a nouns fork. Um, and so owning one of these NFTs lets you command the joke race, this specific entity, this is the joke race and its specific treasury. 
owning joke tokens lets you play in the joke race, but it also will let you do a lot more in time. So you, eventually, we're going to be using our own product to get user-generated features, right? We'll go to our community and say, what do you want us to build? What are the things that are most pressing to you? What is your feedback? What do you want to see improved? And then they can submit options, vote on them, and we can actually go and we can build what our community wants us to build um, by getting much, much better insight into what they need. Right as well, and so the joke token will be used for that purpose. So you think about it. There's two tokens, right? There's the joke race token, which is an NFT. There's the joke DAO token, which is an ERC twenty, um, as well on mainnet. Um, and so what's nice is that because we have these two entities, they can each they can also each offer a system of checks and balances. The joke race is primarily held by people who are able to buy expensive NFTs, right? Uh, you can put together party bids for them. That hasn't really happened so far. Um, there are ways that that could be democratized, but essentially this is a funding mechanism uh, for the project um, that will be held predominantly, I think, by a lot of crypto OGs and, and whales. Joke token, anybody can buy, right? And eventually we'll be adding, you know, quadratic voting and vote decay and other mechanisms to, to really control against whales. And so it's, it's in some ways, you know, it's not a funding mechanism. It's really a, a, a democratized system of governance for the project as a whole. And what's nice is that they can have this checks and balances system because they each have the right to invalidate each other. So if there's ever a risk, right, of someone be taking over either one of these entities and trying to control it, they're going to be held in check. And what's particularly nice is that the joke race, because it's set up where it's one NFT per week, it's impossible for anybody to, to totally control that by buying out all the NFTs. Um, they can't do it because there's only one per week and those are held by a number of different holders each week. And of course, we're also doing it like Nouns did, we're, we're gradually gonna decentralize that and maintain full control until we're, we're confident that we have a community that's fully decentralized. Um, but but yeah, essentially it means two entities, each have checks and balances, each can each can invalidate each other um, if there's ever any ever any like real concerns of, of centralization. Perfect, thank you. Uh, David, your question. Yeah. Um... Nice to be here, guys. Um, so basically, I have this project that uh, we're trying to, um, it's kind of like a refi project. We're trying to like urbanize public spaces and give back to the community. Um, we was kind of thinking of like having like a DAO along the way in the future. Um, but again, you know, the people around here, it's like in Africa and people here are still not like tech savvy and um, they still need some onboarding towards like DAO and Web3. So we was kind of thinking like, what do you think David would be like the right way to go about it? Like, do you think we should get the whole community involved in the future, like in terms of decision making, or would we just leave it to like the core core guys? It, it, look, it, it's a hard question. My answer would be if you want a core team to have full control over a project indefinitely, then start a company, don't start a DAO. Like Web2 is very good for that, right? It's very good at having visionary founders who are contrarian, who aren't interested in listening to their users, create cool things. But if your goal is to listen to your users and get your community involved, that's why you form a DAO, right? And in that case, you want to involve them in a way that's meaningful. So, so something else I want to say about governance is that governance is a pain right now. Governance is this annoying thing that you need to do on top of belonging to a DAO, where you have to open a separate page, you have to go and vote, uh, it's very ceremonial. You know that you're being judged for your vote, right, a lot of the times. And so you probably don't want to do it because there's a public record of what you're going to say. And even if you do want to do it, it's annoying and it's a task out of your day that you have to go and do. So again, so much of what we're working on and we're thinking about is how do you gamify this? Like, how do you turn governance into this fun thing that people actually want to participate in? And I think part of the answer to that is the DAO has to come out of governance rather than governance coming out of the DAO, right? Like DAO should be forming from each of the options that people submit. If someone is really passionate about one thing and it doesn't get majority consensus, they should still go and build that thing because they now have a record of other people who also support it, right? So the DAO can come out of governance. But it's also, you know, it is also important to think about like, how is this gamified in a way that people actually feel like they're playing a game where they are participating in this thing? And so, yeah, part of, part of what we built, you know, really was with the intention of being an onboarding tool for Web3 because it's fun. Um, like for example, you know, a few days ago, Rehash used us uh, to decide what podcast speakers they were going to have. And so all the people that were nominated were then going on Twitter. They were t sharing the link to the contest, asking people to vote. Uh, they were playfully, you know, arguing with each other about who's going to win. Uh, I got a lot of attention on social media for this um, because they're doing it in this gamified way. Uh, and then it also gets people excited about actually participating and learning about each other and feeling like they have a voice in their community. 
So I think, you know, I would take a hard stance on this. Like, yes, education is, is a major obstacle. Yes, teaching people how to do this is a time suck. But if you can do that, you can get people involved in ways that are meaningful to them um, and that they will want to stay involved. We all know almost every DAO out there, everyone joins and they do not stay. They leave. They might hold the token, but they do not keep going to Discord. They do not keep going to Telegram. They do not keep voting on Snapshot. Um, and and this, you know, this is a failure because they are not feeling like they are incentivized in any way to participate. And so, yeah, having a sort of game where they can submit options, they can rally for support, they can support each other's friends, they can form teams around this, they can collaborate, they can get excited in a way that whatever project wins actually has a greater chance of success because it has the excitement behind it. Like those, those I think are, are really important. So I would say as quickly as possible, involve your community. Um, because if you don't, they're not going to stay and they're not going to, you won't have a community. You will just have a core team and you will have a company and you will have a perfect Web2 entity, but there's no reason to be a DAO. Awesome, awesome. Sure. Thanks a lot, Dave. Yeah, thank you. And we have uh, three other questions here. Uh, oh, so, Abdullah, Ab Abdullah Thief, I'm sorry if I <laughs> said it wrong. Uh, what's your question? Yeah, You're it's welcome. Not, yeah. So, I those. I uh, go on board it yesterday, I think. Probably we followed the um, data analyst and on chain data majorly. So I was trying to go through the document, but the document was locked. The document to this meeting. So can I get an access to the documents? Um just the get you're just looking for the GitHub for Jugdow? Yeah, I requested an access already. It's public. Uh, I just shared it in, in the chat. Okay, okay. That, that's what I wanted to ask. So then I had the second question is, uh, how can I get an edit to probably if I have a comment in there to add to the notion for crypto sapiens? Sorry, sorry. I, 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 didn't, I didn't totally follow that. How can you get a, a what to add to notion? If I want to probably add a comment to the notion mm -hmm. Those sapiens notion page. How can I get an edit to? Ah, okay. No, so uh, so we've actually um, yeah. So we're not using the notion now. We actually have a clarity um, roadmap that we'll be announcing soon. But if you have comments for the community, the best thing to do would be to join our Telegram. Um, and so if you go to our Twitter uh, bio, you'll see the link to the Telegram. Join Joked Out Chat. That's where a general discussion uh, is is happening. All right. All right. Thank you. Absolutely, thank you. I see next question from CryptoDad. Um, hey, David. So um, I so I try to understand uh, what uh, JokeDAO uh, offers. Yep. Uh, so seems up to me, uh, Snapshot also can offering uh, the rank a voice uh, a choice voting. Yes. Uh, right. So what's the difference between uh, JokeDAO and uh, Snapshot, or what's how would you differentiate yourself yep. from a snapshot? Yep. So, so the submissions is the main thing, right? Um, it's this, it, it's who's submitting. So on snapshot, there is a creator who puts together a proposal and then asks everyone to to vote on that. Um, and so they might have different options that you can vote on, but they've sourced those options themselves, right? When you use us, anybody who you have given permission to, maybe it's token gated, maybe it's not, um, is able to submit. And so you put out a general, you know, question to say, hey, you know, um, Bankless, you know, Bankless is going to give a grant of 10k, put together a grant proposal. Anybody can then submit the proposal, right, on chain, and then the community can vote on these as well. Um, and so it really opens it up so that you're actually getting proposals and submissions from your own community, and these can be quite lengthy as well, right? These, these so, so the way I kind of think about it, Chase Chapman had a really good line, which is, I don't think we're really competitive with Snapshot. I still think there's a very, you know, great use case for Snapshot. Um, we're really competitive with forums. Like, like really what we're doing is we're allowing for the community building and engagement, right, and people to offer different options for things. So for example, you like go back to my previous example with Lido, where you know, each person could submit a different version of the proposal to say, here's what we want. And so right now, Lido is using Snapshot to do this. It's a disaster because they're just guessing. Every week, they're putting out a new proposal to say, you know, hey, does this treasury diversification plan look OK? And then they have everyone vote you know, yes or no. Whereas if they'd done it through us, 
you would have been able to have the community actually form different versions of that proposal, and the ideal one would have been the one that people voted on. At that point, you might want to use Snapshot, right? At that point, you might want to take that version of the proposal, go to Snapshot and say, okay, but yes or no? Like, do you agree on this yes or no? Um, but fundamentally, you know, Snapshot isn't allowing everybody to be able to submit proposals um, in, in different ways. And there's a lot of other features we're going to be building that, that, you know, Snapshot and others don't have as well that I can talk to. But for the moment, uh, I, I would say that's, that's the primary one. Got it. Thank you. It makes sense. Uh, also, uh, would you like uh, integrate, uh, DrupalDAO's, uh, voting process into the Discord servers or other, because, you know, I assume like, uh, for banking style, we already have some votings in our own server. So yep. how we can, you know, uh, use your service in our own server? Yep. Yeah, great, great question. So, um, I mean, one option is fork us, right? Like we are public, we're open source. Um, and so you can always take and use it. One thing that I've talked to, you, I don't know if I'm allowed to share this publicly, but like one thing I've talked to a couple of people about recently is using something like the Lens API so that you could actually then have um, like a gasless relayer uh, from Biconomy feed results directly into a contest. And so that would open up cool options because at that point you might be able to just, you know, have people submit options in Telegram, have people submit options on Twitter, do it in a really public way where those results would be fed in and then people could vote on them in the contest as well. Um, but, you know, fundamentally we're on-chain voting as well, right? So we use, a, you create a voting token, share that with your community. You can run contests on Polygon, Optimism, Arbitrum, whatever EVM chain you want. Um, and there's a lot of, you know, really nice things about this, but it really, you know, for very casual things, I don't know that you would necessarily want to use us. I think it's, you know, it's really valuable to use us, um, when you want an on-chain vote that actually has those full records and the full data that you might want to analyze in different ways later, which is something I haven't talked about, but, but I can go back to if it's helpful. Got it. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Thank you. Great questions. Uh, I will now read out actually one question because Fims is probably flying at the moment, but she has some question. She's actually a colleague of this group. So oh. the question is, uh, doesn't having one thing to vote on with a di uh, direct impact actually add to the increased engagement of people participating in JogDAO? Isn't gamification make the process fun, but having a clear design purpose as to why people vote is the key to governance. Yeah, 100% hard agree on this. So, so as much as this is decentralized governance, someone creates the contest with a prompt, right? And that prompt can be, here's you know, a five paragraph description of grants and here's what the information that we need. The prompt can be, tell us a joke. The prompt can be, who should we invite on our next podcast, which is what Rehash did. It could be, um, what's something you wanna see built, which is what Austin Griffith did. It could be, submit, Full, full metrics that you have seen in your Dune analy you know, analytics dashboard for optimism. This is what metrics DAO did. So you have all these options, right, for, for whatever that prompt is, but somebody creates that prompt. And so that prompt is coming from whoever the contest creator is, and that is very much the clear design purpose that everyone has to respond to. And so sometimes those prompts are short, sometimes they're really long, but, but fundamentally everybody is playing a game to respond to that, to that prompt. So yes, there is still an element in which the contest creator has a lot of power. The other cool thing is is permissionless governance, right? Anybody could set up a contest for Bankless and say, hey, like I have this question, like do we agree with this decision from Bankless? And they could give voting tokens out to everyone in the Bankless community, hold the contest, and, and then you know share the results with the Bankless community to say, here's what we found in our user research um, as well. So it's permissionless in, 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 a, in a cool way as well um, for anybody to create these. But fundamentally, there is a person who is creating this, and that is very much something, the, the clear purpose for it. And, and so sorry, just to add, sorry if it's too loud. No, you're good. Isn't that, something, is that, isn't that something that like people can actually learn when they're developing DAO governance? Because I honestly think that like the way that DAOs have applied governance were kind of like a throwaway in which like people would need to participate, but also acknowledging the fact that we don't even participate in our own democratic systems. I think that like when people are designing DAO governance, they should have like a goal like Joke DAO does and then like learn from it and apply and see like what other decisions people are more engaged in to actually see whether or not people give a shit about what? the voting process or they yeah. just like want to delegate that to other people. So like, have you seen outside of Joke DAO jokes like yeah. what other types of decisions people can vote on that would work within your model yep yep 
Um, okay, so there, there's a, a couple things to say here. One is like, what are potential use cases, right? So grants is a really good use case. Like, who do we want to give money to? Submit a proposal. Uh, everyone can submit a proposal, then vote on their favorites, right? Bounties, right? What are things we want to build? And then you can allocate money proportionately, like the hackathon. Endorsements, like, you know, um, like, who who do we want to, like, say, you know, we really trust for XYZ project, right? Um, curation, it's really good for. So, you know, who should we give an award to? Like, what was your favorite film that you saw uh, at this festival, right? Or what's your favorite film this year? What's your favorite article that you've read recently, right? Uh, content creation, uh, content creators. So, like, Packy McCormick used us and did a contest, you know, saying, what do you want my next article to be on? And people came up with a lot of ideas. Part of what was cool is that is that some of the best ideas were like around eight or nine, but Packy probably will end up writing on those as well because now he has new ideas to see what his community wants him to write on um, too. So, you know, these are, these are uh, I think, a few of them, but you, uh, Lido, right? Like, you know, we want to do treasury diversification. Uh, we're putting out the initial proposal. Uh, can, you know, if you want to submit an alternate version of this, please do so below. Like it could be that kind of prompt too, where you ask the community to submit different versions of a core team's proposal, right? To come to to a more ideal form as well. So these are these are like a few, I think, of 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 the use cases. But I really think you could use it for almost any governance decision, um, in a way. The other question is like, how do you get people to participate, right? Um, and I would say like, I don't know for a time, but 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 there's two answers to that. One is attentional, and the other is credentials. Attentional is saying like, if this fun thing where there's some social pressure and people want to collaborate and they're asking each other, right? Then they participate. Like Twitter is a governance platform. Twitter is fundamentally a bunch of people going and voting on what they like using the like button. There's no incentive to do so beyond the fact to express that they like something and it helps curate their feed, right? But people do this because they see the social pressure, who else is engaging, the chance to participate, the chance to build community, the chance to talk, right? Um, and so like, that's really what, I think we're trying to think of is like, again, rehash is a great example. A bunch of people were submitted as potential options to join on podcasts. They all go on Twitter, they all share it. They all like jokingly, you know, set up teams to compete with each other too. Um, and so really leveraging Twitter and the attention economy, I think is like one answer, right? The other, the other answer is credentials. What's really cool is that you can keep a record of who's been voting and say, look, the more you vote, the more power you get because you're actually contributing to this community. So we're going to keep, you know, this is something we we're talking to Disco about, like, you know, can you keep, you know, a record of voting as a verifiable credential? And over time, not only are you building a record to show around to say, look, I'm an engaged community member generally, like, you know, you can trust me because when I own the token, I vote. Right, but then that can also go back and impact your actual voting power as well, because the more that you're contributing, the more power you have in voting. So I think these are these are kind of the two fundamental answers for me: are the attentional piece and then the credentials piece. Yeah, I think it's it's great and uh, definitely one uh, example of those kind of like engaged uh, contributors and like uh, how you kind of measure who is engaged more. Uh, as a, a Gitcoin has, uh, they have like the stewards health cards. So definitely something what maybe you can also learn from. Uh, I think it's pretty good design, uh, which is kind of comprehensive. Um, but to the next question, uh, I, I see Justice already has uh, his raised up. So yeah, hands up. Yeah, I think um, my question is, what came first, the joke or the innovation mechanic? Uh, combined, although we initially we initially started the joke race um using the mirror right race um as our original tool and mirror right race is something i've been obsessed with for a long time like one broader kind of theory i have is that um what most projects are missing in web3 is recurring attention like you need to have recurring attention to for the people don't get bored nouns is like really brilliant at recurring attention but like recurring payments don't really exist in web3 uh as much as they do in web2 and recurring attention doesn't exist so the mirror right race was something i was really obsessed with trying to leverage and thinking like, how do you build recurring attention around something using temporal scarcity, dropping something just occasionally. Um, so that gains value over time as more people join, people see who the community is, and you also get that like attentional reward as well. Um, and I really want to expand that as a governance tool. And then they sunsetted the mirror right race uh, about five weeks into that project. Um, and I've been planning to use it for like 20 weeks as an experiment before building our own platform. And they got rid of it about five weeks in and they said, sorry, there's nothing we can do. It's out. And I said, this is the most brilliant thing that like, anyone has built in Web3. 
um, but I think we can do it better. <laughs> so that's that's really when we we went to town and we started like actually building out JokeDAO um, for for what it is today. Um, but I also really owe the Mirror team like tons of thanks and appreciation because the Mirror Right Race was totally an inspiration for this. Uh, and yeah, I would say it really came out of thinking about their design in many ways and how how I wanted to change that, but also like what was really promising about that um, that we got to where we are. So, so a follow-up question on that real quick is, um, obviously, Joke Dow, I've been hearing about it without even knowing what it is cool. for a while. It's like a lot of attention, you know, and right. people talking. I'm like, okay, what? this sounds so crazy. Do you think if you would have just put out like an abstract mechanics governance thing outside yeah. of the theme of the joke that this yeah. would have landed? Uh, you know, I mean, who knows if we actually have landed, right? We only really launched about three weeks ago. Um, we're still seeing, you know, what the use cases are. It seems to be going quite well so far. I'm, I'm happy with, you know, product market fit, but we're new. And like um, that question occurred, you know, I have that question every day. There's, there's a related question to this one, um, which is, you know, what if we called ourselves something besides JokeDAO? You know, like what if we said the future of governance was not something called JokeDAO, but it was called like, you know, uh, government, you know, governance mechanics institution, uh, you know, GMI. <laughs> <laughs> um, and like, you know, would would it have been different? And if, you know, I went to our community and asked that, and of course, our community said, "No fucking way! You have to keep it as joke now. This is the best thing for attention. People talk about it. They think it's funny. They love it." But of course, there's plenty of other people who disagree with that, and they're not going to join our community because they don't like the fact that it's called joke now. And so, you know, you also get into this question, a broader governance question, which is, you know, how do you listen to the voices of the people who aren't part of your community? because they don't want to join your community. And then the other question is, do you want to listen to them as well? And I think like ultimately, you know, the fact that we're trying to have fun, say that governance is a bit of a joke, make this a bit silly uh, in a way that can get attention, I'm kind of fine with it. If, if the people we draw are people who are excited about governance through something called JokeDAO, they're probably our vibe. <laughs> like, you know, they're probably like the right vibe for the community. So it's a bit self-selecting um, in that sense. I don't have an answer for that, though. Like, I, I will torture myself, uh, you know, asking myself if I had done this as less as a Trojan horse and more as like a self-proclaimed, you know, serious experience, would it have gone better? Uh, and I don't know. But so far, things seem to be going pretty well. So fingers, fingers are crossed. Perfect. Uh, Chuck, what's your question? Hey, hey, David. Thanks for joining us. My um, pleasure. We're we're working on a project at Bankless Consulting, and our project team is hitting up our group DM right now. Like, we got to use JokeDAO for this client. Uh, this is like a great tool for what we're what we're working on. Um, yeah. I have another lead in before my question. Uh, I heard you talking to Chase Chapman on her podcast a couple months ago, and it was I listened to it when I was on the Mediterranean coast in Turkey. <laughs> Amazing. So yeah. hearing you talk now is like bringing me back there. And so thanks for that. It's good. Oh my God, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Be back on the beach in Case Turkey. <laughs> today. Um, but anyway, uh, my question is, this seems like really relevant for startup societies and like the network state ideas that Balaji is on tour with right now. Have you seen yeah. any of those startup yeah. societies implement JokeDAO yet or implement your um, open source software in any way? Um, not not yet. I'm really glad you brought up that point, though. Um, I think I think maybe Blockboy shared uh, the, the article that I, I wrote with uh, Packy and Luca on um, Go Fork Yourself. But yeah, I, 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 tell me if I'm totally off here, because I, I might be getting this totally wrong. But I do think like the idea of having optional states that you form because you have found shared consensus is fundamentally like the real goal of what we want to do here. The point is not who wins a contest. Like who wins a contest is, is meaningless in terms of that being the best priority or the best use case. What's really valuable is seeing who voted for different options so that you can find those people and go and build those things with them because they're also as excited as you are. Right. And so that's the promise of forking is to say, yeah, you know, a bunch of people all totally disagreed with the DAO, thought another option was better, but they felt passionately about it. Maybe they're not whales and they can find each other and they can go and form that. 
Also, I think, you know, related to that, the idea that after a contest is over, people can apply metrics retroactively in totally different ways to say, yeah, you know what, if we'd applied, you know, quadratic voting to this, we would have gotten this result. And I want to follow that now. And another one can say, no, 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 you know, if we followed vote decay, another one can say, no, no, if we use verifiable credentials. And so just allowing these different forks to come out of the same contest, I think is really important for creating, and, and, and again, I might be totally off here in, in terms of relation to, to you know, Balaji and startup societies, um, but to be, being able to create these kind of networks um, that are really about, uh, yeah, optional states that people choose to join based on shared shared consensus. Did that? Uh, you might have to fill me in on startup societies, though. If um, oh no, it's just like he's got like it's like a roadmap to having a network state. A startup yeah. society is like people are coming together and trying to get. Trying to get, trying to make something happen, trying to start gaining some traction. Yeah. So it seems like maybe like the point where you're determining what your values are. You know, the the decentralized version of writing your constitution. I could yeah. see, like joked out being like integral to that. Yeah. I and and again, like you know, something I said before is just like again, like whatever the number one option is, like that's the least important thing. Um, I think like like what matters is that if people built consensus with each other because they had to discuss, they had to compete, they had to play this game, they had to collaborate with each other. Like that process is building relationships, which will be more meaningful for the DAO long term. But it also builds excitement around that option so that when it wins, people are excited about going and building it too. Um, mm -hmm. And so yeah, those are those are the pieces that I think are yeah really really meaningful for like starting a community um, as well. It's not just it's not just of course, being able to do better user analytics and being able to find out what your community actually wants is a major unlock. Like right now, Web2 companies are calling up and doing like long interviews, and that's that has a lot of value as well. But being able to do a contest to find out what your community thinks and let them propose what they want and then respond to them and ship what they're really excited by, that's a huge unlock for user surveys, right? In terms of what we build. But I think that's like a lot less interesting than the idea that like when you are starting something, you can actually use this to create community and get people excited and kind of play this joking game uh, in a way that builds relationships. Because if you think of like fundamentally where do we tend to build our relationships, it's usually playing games. <laughs> might be sports, uh, might be Twitter, um, but in some ways, you know, it might be board games, settle as a Catan, right? But like it's so often the way that you build relationships with people is, is building games. And, and that's missing in a lot of JAWS. Interesting. Cool. Thank you. Absolutely. Perfect. Yeah, thank awesome. you. I, 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 I really like that you have played like gamifying the voting that not the first one. It's kind of winning. You actually create another game where I believe Sergio has some cartel of friends and trying to game your system. Yeah, it's like kind of, <laughs> it's, kind, it's more about the nefarious joke cartel. I, I, by the way, for what it's worth, I every week play the joke race and try to compete against the joke cartel and I always lose. <laughs> yeah, Sergio and his friends are too good. Uh, this side, Bankless, Bankless is going to take him on. Bankless is taking on the Joe Cartel. I'm joining Team Bankless. We're going to win. OK. Well, well, they're good at coming in second. I think that that's, isn't that the, the objective here? Yeah. Um, and, and, go ahead, sorry. No, no, yes, yes. <laughs> OK. So and I, I heard your response to Chuck as far as like getting engagement and, and hearing what the entire community is interested in. Is there is there any other application for like a second place reward? Have you found a real use case otherwise? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, yeah, in other governance, could you could you reward second? Right, right, right. Right. Um, well, there's t maybe two ways to interpret this. One is like, yes, of course, if you're like giving, you know, 10K to the top five winners and you distribute it proportionately. But like, is there a case where you reward second place over first place? Well, yes, one is if you change the metrics for how you judge the race such that second comes in first. So like maybe you want to penalize people who voted on multiple options and say you weren't that passionate. You didn't have full conviction, right? So we're going to penalize you for like, you know, sharing your votes and we're going to give conviction votes to people who put all of their votes towards one option, right? Or any of the other things I mentioned, you know, using verifiable credentials, using quadratic voting. And so like actually redetermining the second place won, that might be another use case. But yeah, I do think there's something if it's like, what if that second place is a bunch of voters who didn't vote, you know, on any of the other options and they're all always aligned 
and they consistently have voted for the same options week after week. Like now you're seeing the emergence of a subculture within your DAO. Like these are, there's a team there, there's people who are excited, they're always voting together and they're never winning. Um, do you at that point want to try to incentivize them? I would say, yeah, like there's something vibrant going on there uh, in that sub community. And you probably want to like give them, you know, some sort of grant to say, look, we notice you always come in second. Um, but like maybe if you built that, you would draw more people to our community and eventually you'd come in first. Rewarding alignment. Rewarding alignment. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. And and look, even if it's just for the goo, I think it's brilliant. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> nice <laughs> being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, right on. Great work, man. Thanks. Thank you, dude. And I believe it's also creating kind of inclusiveness because if you have some majority and like always the same kind of proposals will win and then you just kind of almost randomly select one another one like yep. you know you basically bringing new stuff into the community i think it's i i, I you know you, i never thought about it but now when you are describing it i think it's like pretty awesome design if you are not like giving up a whole treasury or right, something right. Like the number one yeah. option because some whale goes in and dumps all their tokens on it right um, that, and that's the thing is like every DAO has to come up with their own metrics for what it means to win. Like, um, and I think like our goal is just expanding that design space and every DAO might have a different way of determining that. But yeah, if number two has a thousand people in the DAO who are verified, who voted for it, and number one has one person who has a ton of tokens because they're the founder, like, you know, you might want to think carefully if you really want to give number one uh, the yeah. lead. <laughs> because we are the DAO, we are not the startup. Um, exactly. Exactly. Blog boy, uh, what's your question? Hey, what's up? How are we doing? Thanks again for joining, David. Um, yeah, thanks for inviting yeah. me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I was kind of curious. So you kind of talk about this value, uh, like the value in like building consensus, and then also like kind of there's value in forking too. So I'm yeah. kind of just curious, where do you think that fork point or that threshold is? Because like I think, and I, I think you kind of touched on this a little bit earlier. Because like obviously, there to an extent, there's value in people forking off and creating their own little communities and and building yep. things that they think are valuable, but then also there is a lot of value in people staying together and working together. And, and, you know, as much as it sucks, you know, sometimes throwing your heads together is definitely, you know, pushes forward. So like, I'm kind of curious, where do you see that threshold of kind of like fork first consensus? Yeah, so so in, in the Go Fork Your um, Yourself article, we use the term forking pretty loosely. <laughs> yeah. mean a lot of different things with it over the course of that article. Um, and like, you know, one thing we talk about is govern is governance for or proposal forking. And what proposal forking, that's what I described before, where it's like the core team says, hey, here's a treasury diversification proposal. And then someone else on community could say, yeah, but I don't like the timeline. Another one could say, yeah, but I don't like the team. And they can all do different versions of it. And then you find out which one, you know, you support the most. I think that's a good example of like where slight dissent of people like modifying it and saying, I like the idea, but like, I don't like the details like that can really actually build a much better community because now people are aligning around the, the actual option that, that has the most support rather than whatever the best thing is that the core team gave them, right? Um, I think at that point, like if there is severe disagreement, you know, um, between different options, uh, you might, it's again, it's a question for a DAO, how they design their DAO. But personally, if I were running a DAO, which I am, like I think what you want to do and this is kind of a crazy thing to say is like give your token value more than giving your specific project value right and so the token has value if it's used by multiple communities so if you can take that token and you can give it as a grant to your dissenters and say you know look i've noticed that you want to build this other thing we still love you but like you're looking somewhere else we're going to give you this grant keep using our token you can start to have this kind of like evolution biodiversity um where you can have one you know overall branch but a bunch of sub DAOs all doing related things and look some of those might die but the best one probably will live <laughs> um and it, it will it, it will stay around and ultimately like you're diversifying in some ways um the potential for that token across multiple projects um by by being able to give them value so i, I like my theory for this is DAOs should actively incentivize dissent and incentivize working by trying to give out um these grants but you know it should only happen when someone actually says we disagree with you will you give us a grant to you know per 
you know, perform something else instead. Because yeah, as much as possible, you want consensus. The, the final note I'd say here is consensus is a lot easier in small groups that can talk to each other than it is in large giant groups. Scale really changes everything in terms of your ability to form consensus. So what's nice with forking is it also allows those groups to be small, right? Where they can be five, 10, 20 people who all know each other, respect each other, can talk to each other, can make sure their voices are heard, can build relationships, rather than 20,000 people who don't know each other and get angry in Discord. Um, and so, you know, I think scale is, the, is, is really the kind of like, you know, crazy variable that really changes what, um, what good governance looks like. Because I think good governance for five people is not good governance for 20,000. Um, and that's also where forking can, can, can help a lot. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I, I think I think there is two options. Uh, like one is the forking, and second is the delegation. In yeah. both cases, you are basically creating a smaller group uh, where the consensus is easier uh, to reach. And just to add to it, actually, delegation will be topic of the next Monday session. So if you are interested to learn about delegation, uh, themes will be leading uh, next week's session. So that's just a commercial break. Uh, Invite me because that's that's something we we still need to build out as well um, is delegation systems, and I have so many thoughts there, but I'm going to save those because I'm still working those out. <laughs> yeah, perfect. So you are on the tele uh, Telegram group, so we will be always like posting updates there, and uh, you know uh, everything uh, like topics who is uh, coming in. So feel free to join, or anyone feel free uh, feel free to join. My, actually, I have also a question, and I don't see any uh, hand raised, so I can actually ask. Uh, have you been thinking also, and you might already kind of answer it. I know there is a, a tool called Etilo, uh, where they are basically trying to find like consensus. So as you were think, uh, saying, like you can change the proposal, tweak it here, tweak it a little bit there, and there might be like five different proposals in the end. Yep. Like, is it joke down or so trying to like, okay, we have these five proposals, to, so we vote on all five, yep. and then we kind of combine those outcomes into one final proposal yep. by kind of like navigating, okay, when we tweak the team, uh, there was like really like a lot of uh, people voting for it. Yep. However, like the, I don't know, the number was more, more voted in the other proposal. Therefore, we should use number from the proposal number three and team from proposal number two, and then kind of uh, form the final one. Is it that something that you are e either doing or thinking about doing? Yeah, yeah, great, great question. So yeah, this is this is the one that I think Gitcoin uses, right, Athela, um, which is a cool tool. Uh, and I've, I've used it before, and I've talked to their team, and, and they're great. Yeah. I think they they tend to offer like a lot of like sub options where it's like you can you know upvote each part of a proposal say what you think of it downvote it as well um, and so you know to the extent that you can get more granular feedback uh, yes I th I think it offers that I think our tendency and this is just like I come from a UI background like our tendency will always be simplicity and so like as much as possible it's like making this as easy to use so that anybody can submit and they can do their own versions of it. But like ultimately, the, both the DAO is deciding how governance is done and the community is deciding how, what options they want to submit. And we're basically the game board for them to play the game um, rather than like building a lot of features. So there are stuff we definitely want to build, like comments, right? I think is an important one um, for us to add. But like we're probably going to stay away from that kind of like granular um, like design focus so that we can let people submit their own options and come come to their own conclusions whether or not they want to offer these things. Okay, sounds perfect. So you basically let people to submit a new proposal as an adjustment if they see the kind of community uh, driving that way. Okay, that makes I, sense. Like, like one way to think about like how we do governance is it's a game where there's two variables. One is how much time you have left and the other is how many points you have. And that's it. Like you're just playing a game where it's like, how many points can I give and how much longer do I have left? And we really foreground that like timer that's counting down um, because like when you feel that pressure on, like it does change your experience a little bit. Like one thing about games, right, is they give you anxiety. <laughs> like um, games work well when you're like a little anxious, a little scared, a little excited as well. And so like, do I think governance should just be like as 
boring as possible no it should like it should like get, you know raise your heart level a little bit and get get you a little excited too but that's it like beyond those two variables of like the timer and the points like everything else i think the user should be able to design and the dao should be able to design yeah yeah perfect uh so decide uh i see you raised your hand yeah hey david um this is sort of a specific question um uh you mentioned nouns DAO before how yeah. much can you speak to uh and as much as you can about the kind of innovation you've seen them um incorporate in their governance structure or what were you alluding to before yeah so so nouns nouns governance is actually a slight i don't want to say point of contention i do think there's other ways that nouns could be doing governance um than how they're doing governance um but what really excites me with nouns uh is first of all uh the temporal scarcity piece, right? Only having one per day, I think is just brilliant mechanism for capturing the most that people are willing to pay. So like most creators put out 10,000 NFTs and they take 5%. But that NFT collection eventually becomes worth, you know, like 30 ETH per NFT. They're only getting 5% of that. What Nouns does is it says, look, we're only giving one a day, but that way we're capturing the most that people are willing to pay for it. So I think that was brilliant, right, as an innovation. I think recurring attention was really brilliant. And the other thing I really love with Nouns and, and talk about with, you know, the, the Go Fork Yourself piece is that they've kind of flipped the whole fund model, like the venture fund model on its head. And they're like, instead of investing in all new projects with their own token, we're going to invest in projects where we won't make any money at all. They're public goods, but they will increase the value of our token, right? Uh, and it's like a whole new model of like thinking about what investing means. If you're investing in things you do not expect to make money, but will you know give more value to your project. Um, and so I think that was really brilliant as well. The way that governance is done at Nouns, I think is a little tricky for the same reasons it's tricky at all DAOs. Um, there's a lot of social pressure um, from you know people within the group uh, responding. They I like that they often put stuff to forums first, but as they've said before, um, sometimes people won't respond or engage because they're overwhelmed. And so like, then, you know, if there's little engagement, it often means it's gonna fail um, instead of actually having like full conversation. So that's a really hard thing to solve for. And, you know, the other thing I think about is like, what is, what is you know, quadratic voting for delegates looks like? Like, th there's just this problem with delegation generally where people delegate whoever already has the most, um, the most voters, right? So if you're already the top, delegate people are more likely to delegate to you in turn and that creates a centralization risk and like i would really like to see like quadratic you know voting for delegates where it's like yeah you can vote you can give your votes to the top delegate but they're going to count a lot less than if you gave them to someone else who isn't as well known and that would create a lot more diversity of opinion i think within within a space as well none of those are unique to, to nouns though overall like you know they really take their time in building community discussing things together voting on them um, and Prop House is like, you know, very similar to Joke Down a lot of ways as well in terms of like letting anyone submit options and then vote on them too. Um, and I think that's, yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a great tool. I would love to collaborate with them, you know, personally, um, because I do think they're the one project where we're, we're super aligned on this. Their leaders will never respond to me, but I will, I will keep trying to, to fight that good fight um, because I do, I do really like their project. Okay, that's good to know, point, point noted. Um, I also suspect that they they will face new challenges as as they grow. You know, they have there's 400 nouns and like 200 owners at the moment. Um, yeah. That's only sustainable. And you know, I kind of live in this world of uh, um, uh, uh, organizational structure breaks down at certain points. Uh, yeah. 10, 30, 100, 300. That's sort of their next inflection point, I think. And they'll probably have to establish new Either new uh, you know procedures or, or or new formats for 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 managing the organization. I'm curious to see where it goes at that point. I I, th I think that the, you know the underlying question here is is consensus good and like fundamentally if you have an investment down and your job is to deploy capital like you know should just anyone who's bought in like make the decision like it's like a venture fund if their LPs were deciding where the money goes um, for companies right like there's you know, a question there, like who should make decisions and should there be consensus, but also like, how do you, how do you incentivize contrarian thinking? Like, like that contrarian who believes really strongly in one option um, for where now should put their money, like that might, that might be the winning option. And it often isn't an investment as well. Right. And so like, I think this is a little bit, maybe what you're talking about too, 
like you know if if you have three people leading investments right um it's pretty easy to say you know we need consensus from two of three but you have 300 and you need 200 of them on board it's a very different story uh even though the ratio is the same so yeah i think i think scale is going to be a big big question for them and i think contrarian thinking is going to be a big big question for them too sure and on top of that what, what you just were referring to i think is uh the um, participation versus um, uh, speculation. Uh, people yeah. involved, you know, like the, most of the nouns at this point, I think, are involved because they want to be involved in the DAO. They want to participate. More recently, I think they've attracted more speculation, more investment. And where right. where is that going to lead it? Right. And, and what does it mean when, you know, the price of your collection is 80 ETH and only people who are, you know, ETH rich are able to join? Um, like, are those the best people to make the decisions for the treasury, right, as well? Um, to their credit, that is a very engaged community that cares a lot about that project. And I think they're they're really, you know, doing, making great strides there. But totally agree. These are these are the big questions that lie ahead for them and for a lot of DAOs. Cool. Uh, thanks for indulging me so, on that, that tangent. Thanks. <laughs> thank you, Lisa, for the question. Uh, thanks, David, for the presentation. Uh, we have one last minute. So... Any Great. final thoughts, maybe something about how Bankless can get involved in JoDAO or something? <laughs> Any final thoughts from your side? Um, I'm always would love to run experiments with anyone in this group. Uh, like I, you know, one way I think about what we're doing is it's like Figma for governance. Like we want people to be able to build their own governance systems however they want and we want to be the design tool for doing that um so you know if you have crazy experiments you want to do i'm in the telegram now you know dm me and like let's think through what some crazy governance could look like sounds perfect thank you and uh and we can as a bank if you're a bank holder you can claim your tokens on thursday for the joke race is that correct yeah and that'll be announced in the joke out twitter Perfect. So join Joe Dow Twitter, claim your tokens, and then Friday we have the race. We need to beat Sergio and his friends. Yeah. I'm uh, on yeah. So thank thank you everyone for joining. Uh thank you, David, for the presentation. Blockboy, thank you for inviting Dave, David for for this. So amazing. I really enjoy uh, all the content and all all the thoughts about governance and this is really super innovative concept and uh we would love to cooperate further uh on, on this and you know do experiments together so thanks great. everyone have a thank great week that was great david thanks so much man Bye. thank you, thank you. Thanks, everybody.